Hi and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner and today I'm going to update my ReactJS project. So originally I wrote the project with React 0 0.12, uh, but now 0 0.14 has come out and it's made some changes that sort of breaks what we've done. So I'm just going to do a few things to update it and get it working with 0.14. So if we jump over to the code, we'll see that I have my HTML file. And so how I have it set up is I have this demo uh, file where I'm using JSX Transformer. And then I have my components in a components folder. And then I have this build folder where I have uh, I've converted my JSX files to regular JavaScript. Uh, so I'm going to make a few changes to update this. So React is now um, been split into two packages, React and React DOM. So I'm going to, first I'll change the version numbers to 0 0.14.2, which is the most recent update uh, at the time of making this video. And I'll just leave it at that. And then I'm going to refresh and see how that works. So if I refresh, it's fortunately still working, uh, but I'm getting some errors. So React render is deprecated. Please use React DOM dot render. Uh, so if I scroll down, you can see I'm using React dot render. That needs to now be React DOM dot render. So if I save and refresh, now what happens? Uh, it's telling me rendering components directly into document document dot body is discouraged. Uh, try rendering into a container element created for your app. So I will make a container element for my app. Uh, let's give it an ID of demo. And then instead of document.body, I'm going to do get element by ID demo. So if I save that and refresh, good, then that gets rid of my errors. Uh, so I'm going to need to make these changes to my build version as well. So I can do that quickly. I'll just sort of copy the new demo element and script tags, go over to my build and paste those in and get rid of the um, the 012 react. Uh, but what I am going to do is add the min, so uh, the minified versions of react. And then the other thing I need to do is the same get element by oop, get element by ID demo. All right, so if I switch over to my build version, let's see if that works. It's still working, and I'm not getting any errors. So that's pretty good. If I click these, it's fine. Uh, if I go back to the demo, OK, so now if I'm clicking the radio buttons, I'm getting one more warning. It's telling me, do not access get DOM node of a DOM node. Instead, use the node directly. This DOM node was rendered by radio other option. Uh, so if I go into radio other option here, uh, here I have get DOM node. So it's telling me it's don't call get DOM node anymore. Just use the DOM node directly. And what they said is that when you're using references, these refs, so I'm using that to access this input, uh, they notice that the only thing you ever do when you access a ref is call get DOM node. So they made it so you don't actually have to call that anymore. The input is the DOM node. So the refs contains only DOM nodes. So that's a bit easier. And then uh, if I refresh that, I can click these. And it's working good. So that's pretty much it. Um, so one other thing that's changed is that the JSX transformer I'm using, you'll see it's still 0.0. 12. Uh, you can see it's still working, which is cool, but they don't have a new version of it anymore, and they've said that you should use Babel instead. Now, unfortunately, Babel, uh, the browser transformer, uh, I'm not sure how to get it working. I've tried on another project. Uh, it seems to work well on a single uh, script tag, it starts to get a lot more complicated when you're using multiple script tags, and I've sort of decided it's not really worth it. So what I'd recommend for you is either use 
the 0 0.12 version of JX, JSX Transformer for now uh, and definitely consider migrating to a build process. Uh, you might want to check out my video uh, about using Webpack with React. Uh, either Webpack or Browserify are uh, definitely recommended for doing transformation. So the way it'll work is you can convert your JSX files to regular JavaScript on the fly, have it watch your code, and then every time you make changes it'll rebuild and then you can uh, refresh the browser to see the new version. Um, but for this demo that's quite a lot of work and uh, you know I have another video that covers that so I'm not going to include that here although I highly recommend it. But what I will put here is uh, an update in my part 8 we used a JSX tool to convert uh, these JavaScript files to J, uh, sorry, JSX files to JavaScript, and now I'm going to use a different tool, Babel, uh, which is now the Facebook doesn't really make JSX transformation tools anymore. They just encourage you to use Babel. Uh, so I'm going to switch to the command line, and then I'm going to run npm install uh, globally. I shall install this locally. So save. I'm going to install Babel CLI command line and Babel, uh, what's it called? I have to go check. So, in their getting started, they have uh, here it is Babel preset React. So, it's a special React Babel plugin, I guess. They call it a preset. And so, I'm going to Babel preset React. And that'll take a minute. And then uh, Basically, that'll work the same way as the other JSX tool. That'll be able to just simply convert our JSX files to uh, to JavaScript. Um, so, if you still are, you know, running your JSX, if you're using React without a build process, uh, you still need to convert the JSX. So, uh, this would be sort of the substitute for that. Although, again, I recommend you use Webpack or Browserify to sort of automate this process. Uh, probably something like uh, if you're not using Webpack, then consider using uh, Grunt or uh, Gulp to do this for you. All right, so that's done, and I should be able to. I have this Node Modules directory now, where uh, whoa, 238 packages just showed up. I assume one of them is Babel, so it'll be in the .bin folder. Any executables. Um, so we have Babel there, and then I should be able to tell it that I want, um, uh, what's it called, not plugin, but uh, preset. So my presets will be React, and then I want it to have the source directory to be, actually let's just tell it components, which is my components folder, and then out to be build and see if that works it seems to work so it converted my demo.jsx to demo.js so if I switch back uh, I want to just make a change to verify that works so actually let's uh, go to the build see if that works seems to work so if I let's say I I don't know let's change some wording in the demo so I'm going to change uh, React.js radio group demo version 0 0.14. And then if I switch back, it's, uh, it's not there yet. So if I go back to the command line, rebuild, and then refresh, now I have my version 0 0.14. So that's working well. Um, and there's uh, just one more thing I want to cover. There's uh, a new feature, it's definitely optional. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet, but it looks interesting. Uh, so if you have a class, a React class, a React component rather, that only contains a render function, like this one here, like there's nothing out, it's just a render function, then apparently you don't need anything but that function, and it'll what it'll do is take props as a as a 
an argument. And uh, in this case, we're not using any props in this one. Uh, so I just need to get rid of that part at the end. And this is actually the same thing as if I just make a function called demo, which I'll do. So now my, uh, and I actually don't need props. So now my React component has been simplified to just be a function. And that seems crazy, but let's try it out. So if I rebuild, is that true? If I refresh, it's actually working. So even if, here, I'll take that version 0.14 out, uh, rebuild, and then refresh. There we go, that's pretty cool. So do I have another, I'm not sure if I have another component or not. Uh, this one has prop types. But what I've heard is that you can also, you can still use prop types with that new trick. So what I'll do is, this is my render function. I'm going to put it here. I'm gonna, so it'll be the radio option is a function. Then I'm going to set prop types on that function. So this is kind of weird, but so if I go radio option dot prop types equals, then I should be able to still. So radio option is now just a function. And if I rebuild it, I think it'll work. No, it won't work. Cannot read property name of undefined. And if I click that, uh, oh, this dot props. So this dot props isn't there anymore. We need to use props as an argument. So I can take out the this three times. And now this is really cool because what we have here is uh, what we'll call a pure function. So it takes the props as an argument and returns the React document tree, the component tree, which is really neat. It's really simplified the code. Uh, there's no React. Well, there's React for the prop types, but otherwise there's no technically not really any React going on. There's just, well, there's the component tree, but it's sort of simplified our code. Uh, maybe I can do it. Uh, okay, so in this radio option group, I have this on change, so that here I can't do that. There I need the more advanced one. Uh, but maybe that's something I can revisit in another video, a way to get around that. And same with the other option. So I get initial state, on change, any, any uh, components that have state, you can't use this new simpler version, but I think it's really cool that it's an option. I really like it. And uh, I, you know, I'm really, uh, I like components that only have props and return that only render that don't have state. I like stateless components. So I think that's really cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna build that one more time. I think, I think we're done though. And looks great. Everything's working and we have no error so uh hope you enjoy that and uh thanks for watching <music>